The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Chikken Germain Adolf, your mathematics teacher. Before we get into our lesson, we'll look at the assignments in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we had an assi as assignments, the questions are displayed on your screen. That's number one displayed on your screen. You were given the matrices M and N. And the first question, question A, under number one, you had to find the product of uh, the scalar three by the matrix N. So in order to do that, we have to get uh, the product. The matrix M was given as, you have four, eight, 12, six, and you are expected to find three, well, uh, this M and then you have M was given as uh, one, two, three and negative four. And you're expected to find three N in equation A. So how do you get three N? You simply multiply three by that matrix N. And the matrix N is the matrix with entries one, two, three, negative four. So in order to multiply a matrix by a scalar, you have to multiply all the entries of that matrix by that scalar. So here we are expected to multiply every entry in this matrix by three. So if we take three times one, we get three. Three times two, we get six. Three times three will give us nine. And three times negative four, of course, will give us negative 12. And that will be the result as displayed on your screen. The next question, you were expected to find half M, that is in B, you are expected to have, to find half, sorry, half M. You're multiplying the matrix M by the scalar half, so you write this as half into the matrix M, which is 4, 8, 12, 6. So in the same way we did, uh, uh, we, we, we DA will do the same thing here. We multiply every entry in this matrix by half. So we are taking half times four to give us two, and half times eight to give us four. Half times 12 will give us six. Half times six, of course, will give us three. And that will be our result. And the results is right there on the screen, as you could see. So in question C, you were expected to find um, 2M plus N. So you had to find the matrix, that is in question C, you had to find 2M plus N. So you're expected to multiply the matrix M by the scalar two. The matrix M is four, eight, 12, six. 
and then you are supposed to add the result of that of that product to the matrix N, which is one, two, three, negative four. So if you do that, the first thing to do, of course, is to multiply all the entries in this matrix by two first. If you do that, we get two times four, which is eight, two times eight, which is 16, two times 12, which gives us 24, and two times six, which gives us 12. And that result will add to the next matrix N, one, two, three, negative four. Of course, you have to recall that in adding two matrices, you are expected to add corresponding entries. So the first entry in this matrix is eight, or the, the, row, the first row. So we'll add this eight to the corresponding entry in that second matrix. If we add eight plus one, we get nine. And then we'll add the second number in that first row, which corresponds to the second number in the, sec in the, uh, the second number in the first row in the second matrix. So if we add 16 to two, we get 18. Then we move down. 24 corresponds to three. 24 plus three will give us 27. And then 12 corresponds to negative four. 12 plus negative four, of course, will give us eight. So that would be our result. And then you will have your results displayed on your screen. Let's move over to the next question. It's already displayed there. But question D, you were expected to find 4N minus, you expected to find 4N minus, 2n. So you have to multiply the matrix n, which is that matrix, by 4. So you have 1, 2, 3, negative 4. And then you will multiply the matrix m also by the scalar 2. And the matrix m is that matrix 4, 8, 12, 6. So the first thing to do is to multiply the entries by the scalars. Given. So if you multiply this first matrix by this scalar, we'll get 4 times 1, 4, 8, 12, negative 16, minus, if you multiply every entry here by 2, we get uh, 8, 16, 24, and then 12. So the next step now is to subtract corresponding entries. So 4 minus 8 will get negative 4. And then 8 minus 16 will get negative 8. 12 minus 24 will get negative 12. And then negative 16 minus uh, 12, of course, will get negative 28. That will be our final result. And then you have, um, sorry, there is um, a mix-up. Yeah, but actually this is what is supposed to be done rather than what is displayed on the screen. Instead of subtraction on the screen, we rather add it on the screen. Yes, so instead of having subtraction here, we rather had addition here. That's why the results are different here. Otherwise, we should have had the, the same results as that. But nevertheless, if you proceed by addition, what you definitely have on the screen will be correct. So in the next step, you were given, you were supposed to add, you were supposed to, sorry, the matrix that was given us four, um, four, eight, 12, 6. Yes, so in the in question E, you were expected to get the sum of the matrix M plus another given matrix 1, 0, 0, negative 4. So in that case, you're supposed to have the matrix with 4, 8, 12, 6 plus 
one zero zero negative four. So if you add corresponding entries, you will be adding four to one, which will give us five. You'll be adding eight to zero, which will give us eight. Twelve plus zero will give us twelve. And six plus negative four, of course, will give us two. So that will be your results as displayed on the screen. So we are still on the module numbers, operations, and relations in the set of numbers. And uh, in this module, we are still focusing on the topic matrices. Of course, the other topics in this uh, module are indices and logarithms and sets. We had looked at indices and logarithms earlier. So, uh, under this uh, topic matrices we are focusing on, we've looked at definition and types of matrices. We've looked at addition and subtraction of matrices. And uh, we are currently on multiplication of a matrix by a scalar and another matrix. Of course, in the previous lesson, we looked at part of it, which was multiplication of a matrix by a scalar. And today we are going to focus on another aspect of that lesson, which is multiplying a matrix by another matrix. Other topics, of course, that will follow will be um, transpose, determinants, and adjoint of a matrix. And then finally, the inverse of a matrix. So today we are on lesson number 23, which is, of course, multiplication of a matrix by another matrix. That's what we'll be looking at in this lesson. Our plan is as displayed on your screen. We'll look at the objectives, we'll look at the prerequisites, we'll look at real life situation, we'll look at learning activity, application exercises, and then we'll wrap up with the assignment for the lesson. As objectives, you should be able to multiply a matrix by another, by a scalar, which we already saw, of course, in the previous lesson. And then you should be able to multiply a matrix by another matrix, which we will be focusing on, particularly today. So as prerequisites, for you to be comfortable in this lesson, there are things that you should already be able to do. Like the first one you have on the screen is that you should, have, you should be able to, you should already be able to multiply and add real numbers. You should be able to state the order of a matrix. Yes, and then, um, so we have prepared some questions to make you comfortable in this lesson. So these are some of the questions displayed on the screen. We have, uh, the first question there evaluates A. You have negative three times negative 11. You will recall, of course, that when you are multiplying any, in, any two integers, if the signs are the same, then the final result will be positive. And if the signs are different, the final result will be negative. So the first question we have there, we are supposed to multiply negative three by negative 11. And if we do that, our final result will be positive 33 because the signs are the same. That is negative three times negative 11 will give us positive 33. The next question is negative half times four because the signs are different, then the results should be negative. So half times four, of course, is two. And since the result, the, the, the signs are different, the results will be negative. So the next question is question C. We have to multiply two by negative 1.5. Of course, you have to remember that uh, when the sign of a number is not written, that number is considered to be positive. So if you multiply two by positive two by negative uh, 1.5, it means the signs are different. The results, of course, will be negative. And our results will be negative three as displayed on your screen. Then uh, the next question, question D, you are supposed to add eight to negative 17. So if you consider that the two signs in the middle are different, we will take a subtraction and that will take 
we'll have 8 minus 17, and the results will be negative 9 as displayed. And then um, if you consider the next one also, the two signs in the video are different. So if you take subtraction, the sign of the first number will be the same as the sign of the second. And when they are the same, we add and simply maintain the sign. So 5 plus 8 gives us 13, and we maintain that sign that is the same throughout. So as real life situation, we have uh, uh, the question displayed on the screen. You have Mrs. Aeon sells three types of drinks. She sells top anana, orangina, and Coca-Cola. The prices of each type and the number sold per day are tabulated as shown on the table below. So you have uh, uh, the price of top banana and the number she sold that day, she sold 50. And uh, the price of one top banana costs 500 francs. And then uh, you have Orangina, the cost of one, the price for one, of course, is displayed on your screen, which is 800 francs. And she sold 20 bottles. And then uh, one uh, liter of Coca-Cola costs 600 francs, and that day she sold 30. So the question is, how can you help her to obtain the total selling price for each type of drink per day easily? Per day easily. So as learning activity, we have as task, uh, as displayed on the screen, given the matrices A and B, where A is displayed on the screen there, and then we have the matrix B. We are expected to find the product AB and the product BA. Then um, in step one, we are expected to state the number of columns in matrix A and the number of rows in matrix B. Then of course, in step two, what do you observe from the result in one above? What do you observe? And then in step three, you are expected to multiply row one in A by column one. So, and then uh, column one, and then so you are supposed to multiply. So two and three, two and three respectively in, so you are supposed to multiply column row one in matrix A by column one in matrix B. So, and then you are supposed to multiply row two in matrix A by column one in matrix B. And then, okay, let me take it over. You are expected to multiply row one by column one in matrix, row one in matrix A by column one in matrix B. And you are supposed to multiply row two in matrix, uh, sorry, let me take it over. You are supposed to multiply row one in matrix A by column one first in matrix B, column two in matrix B, and column three. So you are multiplying row one by row by column one, column two, and column three in the second matrix. And then you will do the same with row two. You will take row two also and multiply column one in matrix A, column two in matrix sorry, you take row two in matrix A, multiply column one in matrix B, column two in matrix B, and column three in matrix B, respectively, in that order. So that's what you're expected to do. So in question, in step four, you are supposed to hence find AB. So using the same procedure in three above, try to find BA. So let's look at the solution to the learning activity. So you were given those matrices. You have matrix A. Matrix A is given as five, two, one, three, and then matrix B was given as uh, two, three, zero, four, five, one. 
So those are the matrices that you were given. And you expected in number one to state uh, the number of columns in matrix A and the number of rows in matrix B. So how many uh, columns do you have in matrix A? In matrix A, of course, we have one and two columns. So we have two columns in matrix A. That's number of columns in matrix A. And then matrix B, we are expected to also state the number of rows in matrix B. So matrix B has two rows. So we have two rows in matrix B. So let's move to the next step. That's uh, the result displayed on your screen, number of columns in matrix A and number of rows in matrix B. So in question two, what do you observe from the results in one above? Of course, if you look at the results that we have obtained, you realize that the number of columns in matrix A is exactly the same as the number of rows in matrix uh, B. So number of columns in A is equal to number of columns of rows in matrix B as displayed. In step three, you are expected to multiply row one in A by columns one, columns two, and columns three, respectively in B. So that's the first thing we have to do right there. So that is row one displayed on your screen. With five, two, we are supposed to multiply that by column one as displayed on your screen. The next arrow indicates row two, uh, column two, and the last arrow, of course, this, uh, display column three. So you are supposed to multiply in that order. So the first with the first column. So if we do that, we also have to use the second row in matrix A and multiply all the columns in matrix B as displayed as well. So if we do that, we are going to get the result displayed on your screen. So we have multiplied five by two and then two by four. And then we have added the result as displayed here to form the first entry on the first row in the answer. We have also multiplied five by three and two by five to get the second entry in that first row. And then we equally have to multiply five by zero and then two by one to get the last entry as displayed. So if we do the same for the second row, we'll get those results and then if we if we, if we multiply all, we'll get what is displayed and then we cannot add our results to get the final result as displayed on your screen. So using the procedure in three above, try to find BA. So we are supposed to try to find BA also. B, BA, means, BA means we have to begin this time with matrix B first. So we do that, matrix B is 2, 3, 0. We have to multiply that matrix B by matrix A, which is 5, 2, 1, 3. Remember, recall that uh, in multiplying, you have to take the first row and multiply by the first column in the second. So we have to multiply this row by this column. If we try to do that, we will have to multiply 2 by 5, 3 by 1, and there will be nothing in that column to multiply zero. So if you try to do this, you realize that this multiplication is not possible. And it's the same thing too for column two. If you try to multiply, you multiply the first two digits and the last entry of course will have nothing that you use to multiply. So in this case, the number of, of a columns in the first matrix is not equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So if we do that, we will not be able to get the results. So notice that the last number in each row always has nothing to multiply. So it's not possible. OK. So if you are multiplying A by B, then uh, matrix A it's a two by two matrix, and then matrix uh, B 
is a two by three matrix. By two by three, yes. So you realize that the number of uh, columns is exactly the same as the number of rows. Yes, so when this when these two are equal, then matrix multiplication is possible. Then if you have to multiply B by A, you will have two times three multiplied by a two by three matrix multiplied by a two by two. In that case, the number of uh, columns in the first matrix is not equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So matrix multiplication is not possible. This is how you check whether matrix multiplication is possible or not. So hence, matrix multiplication is only possible if the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Recall, so given a matrix A with order M times N or M by N and another matrix B with order N by P, so then AB is compatible for multiplication since the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second. Of course, if you look at it, this is the number of columns N of the matrix A, which is equal to the number of rows of the matrix B. Therefore, matrix multiplication is compatible. Otherwise, it will not be compatible. So look at the next step. Then BA is possible if P is equal to M. So if P were to be equal to M, then the, 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 the reverse multiplication B times A will also be possible. So as application exercise, we have the matrices displayed on the screen. You are expected to, you are given the matrices A, B, C, and D, and you are expected to find A, B, and B, A in question A. So if you are to multiply A by B, you are supposed to take that row by that column, which will give us the results we have here. You are multiplying three by three and two by zero to give us that result. Three times two and two times one, and two, uh, three times one and two times two to give us that result. And then of course, if you do the same for row two, you will get the final result as displayed on your screen. You are expected to also find BA. So since the number of columns of the first is the same as the number of rows, it's possible also. So we equally take the first row and it dies down, and take the first row again, it dies down the second column. So to produce the result as displayed on your screen. If we proceed the same way with the second row, yes, then we'll get the results of the second column and then our final result is as displayed. The one thing you have to notice is that the result of AB is not the same as the result of BA. So hence, generally, matrix multiplication is not commutative. Yes, even though there are few situations in which there will be, the answers will be the same, but it's not always the same in all cases. So if you have uh, the matrix C times D to multiply, you take the row times column and then row times column and that will give us that result at the end. Then, if you have to multiply D by C, notice that the number of columns is not equal to the number of rows. So this matrix multiplication is not possible. They are not compatible for multiplication. So this is the question which uh, we saw in our real life situation. So in order to help uh, Mrs. Ayon, you could just write the prices as a column matrix, the price of Anana, that of Orangina, and that of Coca-Cola. And then you will write the number of drinks sold each day. Each day will represent a column. So you have the, 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 the each type of, each brand rather, represents a column. So 50 bottles of Anana were sold, 20 for Orangina and 30. So if you multiply, if you multiply that, if you use that, if you use the price as a column matrix and then the number sold for that day, number of bottles per brand of drinks sold for that day as row matrix, then matrix multiplication will be possible because the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second. So if you do your multiplication as such, 
you will have the total amount sold for each brand of drink as displayed on your screen. So we would have sold our, uh, Anana for 25,000, Orangina for 16, and then of course the last one for 18,000, that's Coca-Cola. So you have assignments to help you grasp the concepts you've learned in this lesson. So you're expected to find time to go through these assignments so that you can better understand this lesson that we have gone through. So we'll be meeting in the next lesson to talk about transpose determinants and adjoint of a matrix. Manetambia niña ne